Uh, welcome everyone to the April 14th Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee call. Uh, as you are all aware, two things we must abide by on this call. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. So standard announcements that we have. The first one, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out uh, each Friday. If you have anything that you would like to see added to that, uh, please add a comment on the wiki page. And then the second announcement is that the Hyperledger Global Forum is still accepting CFPs until April 29th. Uh, so just about two weeks away now. And if you have anything that you would like to um, talk about at the Hyperledger Global Forum, please submit your CFP. And then also, I believe uh, Hart is still correct that the uh, program committee volunteers still open for people to volunteer. Absolutely, Tracy. Uh, if, if you're interested, uh, please feel free to reach out. And we are also still uh, reaching out to people. We have a number of people who have already said yes. So thank you very much if that's if you're one of those people. Um, and if not, uh, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks a lot. All right, great. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? I think Daniela has a minor announcement. She's muted. Um, which is that? The forum for our event in Dublin. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, um, we will be uh, having our Hyperledger evening event at the Guinness Storehouse. Uh, which is you know, the premier place for, uh, for activities in Dublin. So uh, cheers to us all and we'll see you there. All right, thanks Daniela. Uh, any other announcements that anybody would like to make? Okay, seeing no hands and nobody coming off mute, I take that as I know. Uh, so we got in the Hyperledger Cactus quarterly report that is due today. Uh, I know that some of you have already had a chance to look at it. Uh, if you um, haven't yet had a chance to look at it, please do so. Uh, I think the there was one question that I asked and Peter took care of that. So I think um, unless anybody has any questions right now, um, that's probably it for the, the reports, but uh, does anybody have any questions on the Cactus report? Okay, uh, so no questions there. Um, so Dave did let us know that he'd be putting the fabric report together. So we should be seeing that one come in shortly as well. Uh, so as you're uh, thinking about reviewing the cactus one, if you haven't already, um, please also take a look and see if the fabric one is available. Um, so we don't have any quarterly reports that are due next week. The next one that's due is Hyperledger Sawtooth. And uh, as far as I know, we don't have any specific TSC business to discuss, but if so, um, please speak up now. We can uh, talk about anything that people would like to talk TSC business wise. Okay, so um, then I guess Arno, it's up to you to take us through the um, work that you've done uh, for us already on the TSC responsibilities. All right, thank you. Uh, I actually, well, should I share my screen or right? Do you want to click on the link you had in front of you? Uh, sure. I, well, I didn't know if you're going to like speak. Uh, it to doesn't speak. really matter to me, but either way works. So, I mean, for everybody, you can just click on the files changed and there's only one. So, um, so as you know, this is about um, adding a page that, that describes the responsibility of TSC members. And so I figured we didn't really need a task force because I don't know that there is much discussion needed. I figured I would, the most effective way forward was to actually put the PR together. And so this PR is the one we are seeing now. And uh, it basically adds one page to the 
to the TSC uh, space, which would be rendered on the uh, TSC website. And uh, I, this page basically starts listing the, 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 the role of the TSC that comes from the charter. So that's something that we have to accept. If we disagreed with any of this, we would have to go back to the governing board to revise the charter. But I don't think any of this is controversial. At least it's, nobody has ever raised any objections to this. So instead, you know, I think the more interesting part is the next sections, which you know is something that is not listed in the charter, but that based on my experience with now many years as a TSC members and then as well as chair, I, I figured it would be good to list uh, several of the things that I think are expected of us. And, um, and so I, I got feedback from Tracy that I incorporated. So can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah, so this is the most important part, right? So we can look quickly at TSC members. I think it's pretty straightforward. You have to participate in TSC meetings, uh, review the TSC project updates, which we just did, um, bring up and help resolve any issues related to the need of the community and participate in and optionally share the task forces set up by the TSC. That's the kind of stuff we do. And um, attend one project meeting a month. And so, you know, this is interesting because somebody said, do we really want to have this in there? And I think it was our room, but uh, it doesn't matter. The, I felt like, yes, I mean, this is a decision we've made. We said we would do this. And I figured, well, we should just list that. And, you know, we're not the police. And we're not tracking what people are actually doing. It doesn't really, that's not the point. I think the point is really to set the expectation uh, so that in particular, when we do the TSC election every year, you know, people can have a look. We can point to this and say, hey, you want to nominate yourself or be nominated, you've been nominated by somebody to run on the TSC election. This is what they send tells. And then I describe the TSC chair role, which, <laughs> You know, there's this kind of funny story. I mean, it was funny for me. <laughs> Maybe Tracy didn't think it was so funny, but you know, after she got elected, I had a chat with her and I started listing all the things that had just a, a brain, you know, it was kind of a brain dump, all the things that I was doing as chair. And there were a lot of things that she didn't know. And she, she kind of laughed and said, oh, gee, nobody told me about all of these things before I ran. <laughs> and I, thankfully, I don't think she would not have run for that matter. But I think it's, it is true that, you know, some of these things not necessarily completely obvious. And again, I think it's good to set an expectation so that if people are interested in running for chair, they should know what it entails. And there's the thing that, of course, everybody knows about, you know, the running those TSC calls typically. But, you know, you may also have realized that TSC always gives an update at the global forum as well as the member summit. You may be aware that the TSC chair is also on the governing board, which has a few meetings. And during those meetings, we are invited as chair to give an update on what's going on in the TSC. So typically you can have a, well, I used to have only one slide and you can have a couple of slides, but you have like 10, 15 minutes to give an update on what's going on. And then there's also the last bullet, which I think was the most surprising maybe to, to uh, uh, Tracy is, you know, the fact that we are also in contact with the staff who, you know, will reach out to the chair when they have inquiries from external parties. It can be the press, it can be some analysts who want to know a bit more on the technical side, what's going on. And typically this can be a collaboration between the staff and the chair as to how to respond to these inquiries. But this is you know, something that we, chairs you know, do. And so then, um, we had a section, and I think Tracy for bringing that one up, I had forgotten, but we added a small section on the vice chair, since we have a vice chair, 
explaining what the what the primary uh, responsibilities are, which you, as you know, is to run the TSC meeting when the chair is not available, but also to help. So I think this is something Tracy you put in place. I didn't really do that, I think, but uh, reaching out to projects when they miss submitting their TSC quarterly project updates when they're missing. But so this is kind of, you know, I, I hope none of this is, is controversial. Now, if, is there any questions about this? Because then there's a couple of questions that came up in the comments that I think we should discuss, especially one. So I don't see anybody raising their hands or anything. So I assume this is non-controversial, which I would expect not to be honest, but uh, so now if we go back right to the, to the page, the conversation page, we can look at the, the comments. Um, so there was this issue about, you know, attending meetings, Arun saying, do we really need this? So you guys can decide, you know, if you disagree with it, the status quo is in it. And Arun does not further respond. I don't know if you want to do that now, Arun. Are you okay with keeping it? Go ahead. Right. Oh, um, I mean, I intentionally did not respond because I did not know what else to respond. I'm fine with the explanation so far. Probably I should have just said, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fine then. We can call that result. And uh, and then the the other one is Arun suggested we add something about the responsibility for TSC members to act as stewards or ambassador for the Hyperledger Foundation. I actually think it's it's a good idea. This is definitely something I have been doing, um, and not just when I was a chair. I mean, in general, I would, you know, I participate in many conferences and I would talk about Hyperledger. I often talk about Hyperledger Fabric next, but I always give an introduction about Hyperledger where I explain a bit about the different projects and so on. And I've been involved in the uh, European Blockchain Forum, for instance, and uh, I'm a, a member of the expert group there. And, you know, one of the things that I've been doing there for several years now is talk about what we do at Hyperledger to make sure that they are aware and uh, they don't reinvent the world or, you know, that they, they know about this, what's, what we are doing here. And so I think it's quite appropriate to bring that up. But at the same time, this, I realized this is not necessarily something everybody feels like they, they want to sign up for. So I didn't really want to just add it because for me, it was not as obvious as the rest. And I said, we should discuss this. And so in my opinion, we have three, we have basically uh, three options. It's one, we say, we, we don't add this at all. The other is we add it as a must, this is what's expected. Or it's like, you know, an optional kind of activity that people may take. So Ryan, you have your hand up. Sure, I, uh, I the, the page is on, responsibilities and personally i would feel uncomfortable you know telling people that it's your responsibility to be out there front and center because as you noted some people are or are not comfortable doing that um but i think i i raised my hand before you offered the third option which i, I think would be the, the way to do it as not a responsibility but uh i, I would phrase it more as an opportunity uh for people who want to, you know, uh, get out there and and talk in public, and that's how I would go. Uh, Tracy. Yeah. So I I don't I think there are many ways that you can act as an ambassador or a steward, and I don't think it has to involve speaking in front of an audience of hundreds, right? I think it could be answering a question on the chat channels if you know the answer to it. I think it could be, um, you know, helping somebody get involved in contributing to the project that you're participating in, or the working group, or the task force. Right? Just being welcoming to people in the community is acting as an ambassador or a steward for Hyperledger. 
right? Um, and so I just, I wanna make sure that we don't conflate the two of speaking at conferences with being an ambassador. And I, I think that being an ambassador or steward is definitely, um, you know, something that I wouldn't have a problem adding. But so what you're saying is if we add it, we have to be careful, I mean, to kind of specify what this entails. Yeah, 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 well, I, I think you could, I think you could add it as saying an ambassador or steward of the Hyperledger Foundation uh, and provide examples of ways that you might do that instead of saying this is the only way that you can act as yes. an ambassador or steward. Yeah. Okay, that's what I meant. Yes, okay, yeah. sounds good. Uh, Nathan. Well, and I think it's, it, we're not trying to be prescriptive what someone has to do with this statement so much as setting expectations. And I think it, it is a good thing to tell potential TSC members, you know, David or Sean might reach out to you and say, hey, there's a panel at this conference. Are you interested? Or can you help with this webinar? Um, and I think most of the maintainers who would run for the TSC kind of already expect that because they've seen TSC members do those sorts of things or they've participated in that, that kind of thing themselves. It's just, it's a good thing to have on the list. All right, so I hear for now, the people who've expressed themselves seem to be in favor of adding something and being careful about, you know, how we word uh, what this entails, but uh, any other opinions or oh, hot? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's not unreasonable to ask TSC members to sort of pitch in and help out with, you know, some things, but certainly how that occurs should be open to them. You know, Rye and others are absolutely right that not everybody wants to go in front of, you know, uh, huge numbers of people at conferences or things like that. But there are lots of other ways to be a community steward, as Tracy pointed out. So I, I really liked how Tracy put it. I did want to point out and I wanted to make sure that it was public before I did. Um, this is the, the, the LF mantra, right? Humble, helpful, hopeful. And, <laughs> and uh, that is something that uh, I, I think encapsulates uh, a lot of what Tracy said about answering the questions. You know, if you can, if you can answer or redirect someone, uh, you know, that's, that's perfect. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that. All right, thank you, Right. Okay, any other opinions? Okay, if not, I think, you know, so th this is the only thing left, I believe, right? If you scroll down, I think that's it. So um, if we're in agreement, well, then there's a question of the table of contents and how, where it fits in the page, but I don't think anybody it is worth our time discussing here. Uh, Kamlesh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, Nan. So uh, uh, this is regarding the point number four and five, like communicating with the external industry organization concerning data technical methods and especially uh, point five appointing representative to work with other open social standard communities. So what is uh, this one? Like uh, what other block, other like suppose like Ethereum Foundation is one of the open source, maybe there are like Hedera has graph or maybe IEEE blockchain. So all is a uh, different open Can you source. move back up, uh, Rai, please? I think it's part of Arun's uh comment right is that what you mean Kamlesh? i'm asking the, there's a point number four and five in the tsc response it is in, in the page okay uh yeah 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 yeah. you mean at yeah. the at the beginning of the page yeah yes. yeah you're going to go to file change and then open the file yeah here. Yeah. good point so this is the part that's from the charter yeah it's like this four, point and four and five <clears throat> Okay, so what is your question now? My my question is like uh, appointing representative to work with open source and standard communities. So 
if if someone from the TSC is uh, part of this kind of commit committees, so they they need to convey this message or or kind of update to the hyperledger or uh, what is all about. So my understanding on this is we haven't done that. We have never that I know of. So I think I would know. <laughs> but I don't think we have ever formally appointed any representative to work yeah. in other organizations. No. So actually, I ask the question because currently this IEEE blockchain initiatives uh, kind of appoint, appointed me as a their uh, co-chair for uh, there some initiatives in sustainability and blockchain, and even I am. I am kind of conducting the hyperledger workshop there, so I just want to be uh, sure, like whether this is right or this is not uh, right, because I do blockchain is also the open source community and kind of, but they are not focused on any, any specific blockchain. Is a generic blockchain? Yeah. So uh, my understanding of this, and again, this comes through the charter, right? So. My understanding and others may have a different point of view, but it has always been, I mean, I'm also involved in other organizations, right? Quite a few. <laughs> and, and so clearly you're entitled to do this. And again, when you're in those organizations, you can act uh, as a steward for the Hyperledger Foundation, not only because you're a member of the TSC, but just because you're involved here, you can talk about what's going on. For instance, okay. in OpenSSF, I've given feedback on, you know, the 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 vulnerability disclosure guidelines when we start looking into it. And so, I think that's totally fine. I think this point is provided because there may be situations where we actually want to appoint formal representative, okay. where say there is an activity is not somewhere else. And as a community, we say, you know what, we should have some somebody representing us there. That's my that's my take on this. But again, I mean, we've never really done that, and so I don't think the situation has arised. So, okay, oh. okay. yeah, that was my take on that too. Arno is my sort of scenario is imagine that, like you know, the EEA is doing like an interop committee slash working group, right? And, you know, Hyperledger is officially a member of the EA and we should have someone following it. So we say, okay, Peter, go join this committee as the Hyperledger representative. Um, so, so that's what I sort of imagine this provision uh, working as. And we really haven't ever yeah. used it, um, but there's no reason we couldn't. Exactly. See how I just Daniel, volunteered uh, you, Peter? Um, in that situation, that's actually not allowed. If, if it's a formal organization, it has to be staff members. Um, now, if those staff members are also employees of companies that are members of those other organizations, um, then, you know, then that you know, they still can't be official members or representatives of Hyperledger. Um, and that's just due to most of those organizations bylaws. Mm -hmm. Just that's- Yeah, of course. I mean, they can just decide on- right. union we, we, union. we do not, yeah, we do not by joining, Hyperledger Foundation by joining the EEA or anything else does not provide um, the ability for anyone in our community to, or members to be then members of staff. Just, it's a little caveat, good but just, point. yeah. Yeah, no, but that's a good point. I mean, of course, this is assuming that you can be, you know, participating in that other organization. We should collaborate. <laughs> we should certainly collaborate. Okay, but so, all right. So uh, thanks for bringing that up. I hope this clarifies it. Uh, I think this is interesting because we have never really talked much about this, but so it's a good opportunity to do so and kind of they will set everybody's expectation as to what our charter says. But so what I meant to say next was if we have general agreement, then what I suggest is I will update the uh, I will update the the PR accordingly, and then I would really invite everybody to have a look at it and and indicate please on the PR if you approve 
And if we have, you know, enough approvals, then we can just merge it and we're done. Of course, this is like everything else. It can always be updated later on if we find anything else. So it's not that in stone. It's in GitHub after all. Does that sound good? Or any any issues or concerns with this? No. Okay. So Tracy, that's it, I think. Okay. Uh, so thanks, Arno, for taking us through that. Um, so as you can see, we are at only half past the hour, or maybe at the top of the hour, depending on where you're located. Um, and we have made it through the agenda. I will say that there are things uh, from previous task forces that have been done on the wiki and if you haven't commented on those yet and you would like to do that please do so um, specifically uh, the project families task force has some updates to materials and um, some commentary so please have a look and um, participate there before we have the next call to go through that, which at this point I think is two weeks away. Uh, next week, the plan is to go through the project health dashboards task force and um, have a look at uh, what's there. Uh, right in the comments, there's some commentary down there at the bottom from Jim as far as his action item and what he was proposing. So if there's comments there that you guys would like to um you know provide some some input on some of the the tagging that's there uh the other thing that has been done on this particular task force is the website personas wiki page that's underneath um there has uh, some just some thoughts about different sorts of personas that will be visiting the hyperledger website um that you know may or may not exist and if there's other ones that you think may exist please add to that page as well as we go through so um just reminding people that just because we're doing this in the tsc meeting doesn't mean that we shouldn't be doing things offline as well and um yeah if there's uh anything else anybody would like to discuss today now's the time How do we how do we think the task forces are working out during the TSC meeting? So I think it's a good use of uh, the calls actually. And okay. I'm pretty happy with the way it's going. Great. And I saw three at least three th thumbs up, maybe more. Um, so. All right, well, if nobody else has anything else they'd like to add, I'm going to close out the meeting today then. So thank you all for attending and we will talk again next week.